I'm seeing a window. And it's a decision about something window related. Okay. That is crazy. I don't think anybody knows that. It's so weird. We're gonna replace those windows right there. Was this a conversation that would have just been had recently? Uh -huh, a couple days ago. Okay. <gasps> oh I my know. goodness. That's strange. I know, see? Yeah. You never know who's watching over you. You never do, or watching your windows. Listening to <laughs> listening to your window conversations. Well, if only they would wash them. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> That'd be much more yeah. convenient. Can you pass that message back? I am. Okay, thank you. Grab the Windex. <laughs> <laughs> um, at this point, I'll ask you, who did this belong to? Robert. Yeah, turn it over. Yes. You'll see. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so special. What an amazing really thing cool. to get to have. Yeah. Look, obviously, when people watch the show, mm -hmm. <laughs> they're going to think in watching this, well, of course, Tyler's going to connect to Robert Kardashian, because, of course, that's yeah. who everybody yeah. knows. But for me, I find oftentimes the more ambiguous, the random details, like the window thing. And those well, are the details. The window thing, nobody would know, because no, right. I've never mentioned it to one person. I believe that all of those details, you know, came from him and, and are his way of connecting. You know, well, that's really exactly why it's important. There's a mishap in a vehicle. He's showing me the symbol for snapping my fingers. And when I say that, that always references to a quick passing. I feel like I didn't really have time to be able to fully process what I was going through. Yeah, he, um, he died in a car accident. OK. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's OK because I feel like I have to talk about this. And as he's coming through with this, he's just acknowledging um, a reference of nothing could have been done to, to stop this in the way this comes across. If there is any peace to be found in this, to know that he wasn't in any pain, okay? And immediately the feeling I get is a strong sense of like love and I get an immediate feeling of appreciation. And that comes through really strongly. You know, in traditional situations, if someone is driving drunk or texting and driving, usually they'll take accountability. Um, in this case, for whatever reason, he's more so projecting accountability outward, um, as in this isn't really my fault. Yeah, it wasn't. The other guy was a, he was killed by a drunk driver. Wow. So the other guy was drunk, right. yeah. And, oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Well, we all called him Bear. His real name was Edward. And, um, Bear was my boyfriend in high school, and when he passed away, we were seniors in high school. And it was very sudden and very tragic, and um, that was 2002. It's still hard for me to get over. Like, I, I feel like, you know, I have gotten over a lot of it, but it's like every time I hear his name or any of the situation, that's why I get so emotional, because he meant so much to me. When Bear came into my life, we instantly connected. I mean, I've never experienced something like that until my husband now. And it really was crushing. I felt like my whole world came crashing down onto my back. And I thought that was it. Like, I thought, like, how am I ever going to recover from this? He acknowledges your accomplishments and references to being aware of your career. And from his perspective, the feeling is that he has guided you throughout this process. It's a feeling of, like, you carried on his legacy through yeah. your work. Her and I, um, every time before we'd go out to the ring, like, we'd make our entrance, we'd always, like, Talk to him and my grandfather before we'd go out. Yeah. That's so special. My brother passed away about five years ago. My connection to my brother is he got this award back in 1983. I've covered it up so that Tyler can't see what it says. But he had a very untimely death in a situation where we weren't speaking. I felt guilty about things. And then he left my mother alone. He was very close to my mother. He never met my kids. So to this day, I'm conflicted about. I'm still very upset with him. My brother was the lead singer of a big band in the 80s called Quiet Riot. One of their big songs was called Bang Your Head. And if you think about a headbanger, right. yeah. he had long, curly hair. Right. And that's why when you were talking about the wind right. and the hair yeah. like going, yeah, that's, that's what, what he was, was known picturing. for, his okay. the hair thing yeah. and the curly, right. long, wow. wavy hair. It's funny. And then also good to keep in mind, there is an inside joke. And these are pieces of information that are going to be good to check with later. There's a joke about a whoopee cushion. Because <laughs> it's like, there, there was like, I joke about it, but not that someone just sat on a whoopee cushion. My brother had this amazing, disgusting ability to fart on command. He's one of the only people I know who could just sort of spontaneously pass gas. We all had a bit of a strained relationship with my brother towards the end. He wasn't in a very good place. And it was really hard for any of us to talk some sense into him. 
it was very difficult to have a relationship with him. But also when he died, um, we felt like we were on a episode of like Unsolved Mysteries. He was missing for two weeks and you know, yeah, we didn't know where he was. I'm so sorry. There's also this thing though about like a car thing and there's an apology around this. Either wrecking someone's car or taking someone's car without their permission, it's this thing. He uh, wrecked his car in the middle of Utah almost two years ago. And you know, he was running on lack of sleep and he ended up crashing his car in the middle of nowhere. And it was in November, so it was really cold. When you have hypothermia, you really lose your mind. Like, you know, you have no sense of what's going on. And so he clearly just like stumbled down, hit his head, and then just didn't get up. It, I mean, it was crazy. Yeah, I'm so sorry. That's so difficult. I mean, I can't even imagine how that must have felt. But... Yeah. yeah. So can I ask you a question? Absolutely. Did it get to a point where he um, got lost out there and couldn't find his way back to his car and his phone. Let's see. And he's having me acknowledge looking for a river, looking for a river, like the I know water. Yeah, like to be able to walk, like to like follow where the water was. There's this feeling of just not getting the chance to obviously do this to an area of, of population. Oh, so God. there would. So he was trying to find his way out of there. Right. He was gonna follow. I have no doubt in my mind, based on all of the details and validations that have came through today, that he didn't intend you know, to end his life. God, it just kills me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> that was really hard to hear because the thought of him being out in the middle of nowhere just kills me. Just kills me. And I think deep down I knew that, but I'm, I'm happy that I know. That's how I can then accept it and move on from it and come to terms with it. I would rather know than not know. Oh, okay. He doesn't want you to feel any guilt about your success when it comes to him. So I know and that seems like a weird thing to say. No, it's not. But he doesn't <laughs> not when it's he coming doesn't, from him. <laughs> he doesn't want you to feel like for all you have in your life that like you got it all and he got nothing. He is acknowledging pride around your all of what you've done, your hard work. <laughs> He acknowledges in hindsight that he was just dealing with this issue that he simply couldn't beat. And he is so proud of all of the success that you've been able to have and create. And he doesn't want you to feel any guilt around that. You came for your own reading. Yeah, That's really I why you came. For you. She was like, I just wanted when to is get it in. my turn? Um, okay, let me see about that. Good to keep in mind, you are going to deal with the vertigo, like feeling dizzy. Um, yes. Do you get vertigo? Like a feeling yes. of like dizzy, like I feel all like I can't. Time. Okay. Um, do you have any questions? What about love life? Love life? Oh, Just no. really quick, I'm sorry. I think really in, in, in yeah, let me look. Okay, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> look, you said yeah. Sense. Okay. There's a situation with, uh, some, someone tries to get with one sister, okay. <laughs> someone oh tries to get with one sister and then tries to get with the other. Um, what is happening? Oh my God, does that make any sense? Oh, Actually, like, kind mm -hmm. of. You do. Yeah. You do. I kind of do. You do. What about that situation? I don't like that situation. That person, I, I'm not... We'll discuss. I think we're on the same page. Yeah. Okay. As long as it makes sense to you. I'm mm -hmm. watching. But yeah, it's all the matter. <laughs> That's good. Um, also good to keep in mind. It basically, there's a situation with an individual from the past that we've been romantically involved with, and I basically see this individual kind of going in and out. And to me, that generally indicates that this person's kind of in our lives and then kind of out of our lives and kind of in our lives and kind of out of our lives. Mm -hmm. The feeling is basically that we want to really set healthy boundaries and say, you no, know, nope, you can't kind of dip your toes in and leave when you want and can't really commit <laughs> yeah. the way this comes across. It's like, I still want to be part of your life, but I can't commit to the things that you really want me to do. It's like a I really... I know what you're talking about. And it's still, and what, what's weird though is like right now it would be platonic. It's not a romantic thing yeah. right now. It mm -hmm. But the feeling is like, it's still not a healthy reminder to have yeah. instability in that dynamic. So the feeling is like really set the terms with this individual. Keep yeah, I think that's from like my childhood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you. Absolutely. You yeah. almost met the whole family. I know, basically, I have. There's just Ken. right? Kendall left is the only right. one, so. I'm very grateful for all, all the information that I got and received, so thank, thank you for that.